This is the new face of evil. This is what nightmares are made of. Ruthless, cold-blooded killers on a mission to wage war, to annihilate millions of people. We are their enemy, and they will stop at nothing to destroy us. All measures should be taken in our defense, that always will we remember the character of the onslaught against us. I think it's impossible to say that the Syrian rebels are not associated with Al-Qaeda. So there is a great irony that you will be arming forces that a, a normal common sense use of the word associated can say that these people are associated with Al-Qaeda. But you watch in typical NATO US false flag fashion, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. There's a global crime syndicate that controls NATO and the major Western governments, and it is using Al-Qaeda to overthrow secular governments. Breaking news now from the war in Syria, and this could be significant. Reports that chemical weapons have been used in that conflict. These are some of the scenes now circulating on the internet of distressed children apparently suffering the after effects of a chemical attack. Some of the video footage is too distressing to broadcast, and it is unverified. But there are scores of dead, among them very young children. Good afternoon, everybody. Ten days ago, the world watched in horror as men, women, and children were massacred in Syria in the worst chemical weapons attack of the 21st century. The Assad regime, and only undeniably the Assad regime, unleashed an outrageous chemical attack against its own citizens. Now, after, after careful, careful deliberation, deliberation, I have, I have decided, decided that the United, United States, States should, should take military, military action, action against Syrian regime targets. We can tell you beyond any reasonable doubt that our evidence proves the Assad regime prepared for this attack. I've watched debates in Congress. A congressman asked Mr. Kerry, is there Al-Qaeda? People say they've gotten stronger. He says, no, I say officially, they aren't there. The main combat unit, the so-called Al-Nursa, is a unit of Al-Qaeda. They know about this. It's not pleasant for me to see this. Well, we communicate with them and assume that they are decent people. He lies openly and he knows that he lies. We're not really positive who, uh, who set off the gas. I mean, the, per the group that's most likely to benefit from that is Al-Qaeda. Did President Bashir Assad gas his own people? Not according to a growing number of skeptics, including Alex Jones, syndicated radio talk show host. I don't know who launched the chemical attack, but all the evidence leans towards the rebels having the motive to do it. And the Russians have put out a new report saying they have proof the rebels did it back in March of this year. Some people here and there amazingly have questioned the evidence of this assault on conscience. 
I repeat here again today that only the most willful desire to avoid reality can assert that this did not occur as described or that the regime did not do it. All right, so what kind of proof is there that the rebels would do this? I mean, the rebels supposedly are supporting the people of Syria. They would actually sacrifice their own people in order to draw America into this war to start World War III? Well, look, uh, the, the rebels are made up of jihadis, al-Qaeda, and some domestic Syrians, but around 60%, many studies show, are al-Qaeda, are jihadis. They've been wiping out whole Christian villages. So the, I don't think the rebels represent the Syrian people. I believe you will not deny the fact that uh, one hardly should back those who kills their enemies and... Uh, now eat their organs uh, and all that is filmed and shot. Do you want to support these people? Do you want to supply arms to these people? There's a growing volume of new evidence from numerous sources in the Middle East, mostly affiliated with the Syrian opposition and its sponsors and supporters, which makes a very strong case based on solid circumstantial evidence that the August 21st, 2013 chemical strike in the Damascus suburbs was indeed a premeditated provocation. I would not understand or comprehend that Bashar al-Assad, no matter how bad a man he may be, would be so stupid as to order a chemical weapons attack on civilians in his own country, when the immediate consequence of which might be that he would be at war with the United States. So we could be looking here at, at, a, at a frame job. Available data puts the horror in a different and disturbing light, meaning it's not Basher doing the horrible things. It's the rebels nerve-gassing themselves, framing Basher, setting him up so that the Al-Qaeda guys win, and then we end up on the side of Al-Qaeda, and you've heard that. So this reeks of a false flag operation. I can't see fighting to impose Sharia law in, in Syria. I also can't see sending my son to fight with Islamic rebels against Christians. I also can't see my son going to fight with Al, on the same side as Al-Qaeda. We should be focused on defending the United States of America. That's right. why young men and women sign up to join the military, not to, to as, as you know, uh, you know serve, serve as Al-Qaeda Air Force. A seven-hour-long debate in the British Parliament has culminated in a landslide approval of UK strikes on Islamic State positions in Iraq. All three major parties backing the initiative. The bombings could be unleashed any moment now. As of today, there's a new battle that has begun against ISIS trying to recapture Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit. The town of al-Baghdadi falling into the hands of ISIS as the Iraqi army evaporates. ISIS is also fighting to keep territory in Iraq. Tonight, a fierce battle continues for Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit. Iraqi forces hope to seize it to use as a base for eventually retaking the city of Mosul. This as the terror group gains ground in Anbar province, some predicting a collapse of the area within hours. In a new, slickly produced video, ISIS claims its militants are still on the streets of Tikrit, confidently fighting off the assault by Iraqi forces. On the global map, you see ISIS spreading the places like Algeria and Libya, uh, into the Far East and Indonesia and the Philippines as well.
This is radical Islamic Jihad making war on Western civilization. Once again, the world is standing by doing little while the ISIS menace grows, spreading all over the Middle East and North Africa. I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. Uh, Senator but that's Paul, not you're... true. Well, it's not true. Uh, it's you want not me to read true. From the... uh, Whether I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Tudneva says people living in ISIS-controlled areas are in fear of the harsh penalties for infringement of the stringent laws. The Islamic State terror group has reportedly executed a hundred of its own foreign fighters who tried to flee their headquarters in the Syrian city of Raqqa. We're here in the 17th Division military base just outside the city of Raqqa and we're here with the soldiers of Bashar. You can see them now digging their own graves in the very place where they were stationed. Can ISIS be defeated in this battle here? That's the big question mark. And if ISIS can't be defeated, having taken this fight now to back to ISIS, and if the Iraqi military is unsuccessful, then I think you have to look at a very different map in the Middle East. Fighters say they often manage to defeat much larger armies Iraqi military because they're not afraid to die. Al-Qaeda in Iraq four years ago was allowed to set up bases in the west of Iraq and invade eastern Syria. They started the civil war four years ago in Syria. They were given massive funding. They're 65 percent, according to NATO, of the rebel force. The Council on Foreign Relations last year had the headline, Why We Need Al-Qaeda. And they said, give them air support to take over the country and we'll remove them later. Bull. Since the capture and execution of Saddam Hussein, there's been death, chaos, tremendous instability in the region, and worst of all, the emergence of ISIS. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. <laughs> ISIS looks like it in fact can capture and hold territory and that is their whole goal to continue to expand throughout the region. The White House armed, funded, militarily aided and gave political office to the guy now leading ISIS terrorists in Libya. I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Abdel Hakim Belhaj, seen here meeting with Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham, was the emir of the Libyan Islamic fighting group LIFG, an organization affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, which killed US troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. I know these people. I'm in contact with them all the time. We know the United States arms, trains, and funds ISIS. Is the U.S. involved with any uh, procuring of weapons, transfer of weapons, buying, selling, anyhow transferring weapons to Turkey out of Libya? To Turkey? How about we find out why the hell ISIS keeps receiving these accidental airdrops of weapons caches from British and American planes? Let's cut the bullshit. The war on terror is a total fraud. How about you stop arming and funding fucking bloodthirsty terrorists in the first place? ISIS is a Frankenstein that was created by the CIA, Mossad, MI6, even the Pakistani ISI, if you want to trace it all the way back to Al-Qaeda. The Islamic State continues to butcher Christians and Muslims across the region. And all because our governments supported these subhuman scumbags from the very beginning. Bottom line, how do we kill ISIS? I mean, it's really easy. All you have to do is stop funding them. The Obama administration simply has to stop funding ISIS and stop doing these accidental airdrops with supplies to ISIS. Cut the snake off at the head. The regime change begins at home. Exactly. This is the new face of evil. This is what nightmares are made of. Ruthless, cold-blooded killers on a mission to wage war, to annihilate millions of people. We are their enemy, and they will stop at nothing to destroy us. All measures should be taken in our defense. 
that always will we remember the character of the onslaught against us. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.